CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day, KB9 VBR, Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo calling CQ Field Day. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9 VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Well, it's field day. A field day, ARRL field day happens always on the fourth full weekend in June, and that's what this weekend is. And this year, field day 2020 is a little bit different than uh, the field day experiences in the past, and mostly due to the, um, the global pandemic that we are experiencing. And that's kind of an okay thing, because I think what it does is sort of drives us back to our roots, to what field day is. And field day really is an emergency preparedness exercise where you gather your equipment and deploy in some kind of wild or unfamiliar area and then operate for a 24 hour period straight. You know, traditionally our club would um, haul out the trailer and then and everything in the kitchen sink and set it all up and um, have a lot of fun for that 24 hour period. But um, you know, today, you know, this year, uh, instead of doing a club wide uh, field day activity, it's going to be a little bit more um, individualized. Everybody, you know, people are going to be operating from home, people are going to be operating from parks, uh, people are going to be camping like myself, and um, you can aggregate your scores to have one, you know, massive field day score for your for your club or organization which is, well, so so we'll see well how that's gonna kind of shake out but what I'm doing this year is uh, myself and my family are camping up in uh, northwestern Wisconsin we are at the uh, Flambeau River State Forest this is a 94,000 acre uh, forest preserve that um, uh, has the uh, Flambeau River uh, kind of flowing through it. The Flambeau River is, um, it's a great place for canoers, uh, paddlers, kayakers. It has a combination of class one, two, and even some, even some class three rapids in it. So it's a, it's a nice paddling experience. But um, for us, you know, we're at the uh, Lake of the Pines uh, campground and um, a really nice kind of quiet remote spots. A cell phone doesn't work yet up here at all. So um, beautiful area with a super low noise floor. So um, I'll, I'll kind, of, kind of tell you what um, we're doing for our field day setup this year. I got two campsites. Um, my uh, daughter and her, her boyfriend are in one site, and then uh, we're in the other site. And then across the site, I have um, an 80 meter off center fed dipole antenna uh, strung up, and that's gonna be my primary antenna. Uh, that antenna, we tested it out a couple uh, weeks ago out at a, at a county park and had very good results with it. So I'm really excited to use that antenna this year for field day. And then my backup antenna uh, or secondary antenna is going to be this uh, Wolf River Coil Silver Bullet 1000. And this one's a little bit different. This is Wolf River Coil's uh, high power version of their Silver Bullet 1000. They've done a little bit of engineering to it so um, it can handle up to 500 watts a sideband, a hundred, I, th I think it's 125 watts CW or digital modes. So you, you can run barefoot um, FT8 with this um, coil without fear of overheating. So we're going to give that a sort of a test run uh, this weekend and see how it works. Now I got to tell you that, um, you know, in full disclosure, and since we've got no agenda here on this channel, uh, this coil has been supplied to me by uh, Wolf River Coils, and I thank, I, I thank them uh, much for their. Um, patronage of the channel. I really appreciate that. So uh, just to let you know, I did not purchase this, this item. And um, the, the off-center fed dipole, of course, that's something I built myself with a purchased uh, MFJ 913 uh, 4-1 of Ballon. So uh, that's kind of the setup here. Uh, one other thing I want to kind of tell you before we get going is, is when well, putting up the antenna, a lot of people ask, well, how do you get that, um, how do you get your antennas up in the air? And what I use is this um, throw bag. It's by um, Weaver Leather Company. It's an arborist throw wet bag. It's about 12, 12 ounces in weight. Uh, it's a canvas shot bag, so it uh, works really well. Um, you, you can get a line, you know, 30, 30 or so feet in the air uh, with, with this bag, and it doesn't, it's, it's used for, uh, by arborists, so it's not gonna snag in the trees. So that works, that works really well. And I'll put a link to, to this product in the video description below if you're looking for something like that. So my basic setup here for field day is going to be, um, of course, the antennas that I that I described, and then I'm using the ASU FT891 uh, portable transceiver. That's the one I usually use for my field operations. Uh, battery power is a 50 amp hour a lithium iron phosphate battery. 
Uh, that's the battery I usually keep in my little camping trailer. I will be running that. I also have a 100 watt uh, solar panel to kind of keep things uh, charged up during the event. And then when I run out of power there, I also have my little 12 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate battery yes, a, as sort of a backup. Uh, computer, I'm running logging the um, N3FJP uh, logging software that everybody uses. I got a um, power inverter so I can keep my computer recharged. We'll see how long that lasts. And um, the signal link USB for the digital modes. Well, that's it for my kind of field day setup. I'm just going to kind of run a compilation of the weekend here. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. If you have any questions or comments, uh, what you see, you know, leave them in the video description below. We'll kind of filter things out. But for now, this is Field Day 2020. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Kilo Bravo Nine, I believe, ending in Romeo, your one echo, Indiana. Uh, the call sign is Kilo Bravo Nine, Victor Bravo Romeo. I got your one echo, Indiana. You are one Bravo, Wisconsin. Thank you, SL KB9 BBR. I heard a Kilo Bravo 1 station, please come again. Roger, roger. Kilo Bravo 1, Bravo, Charlie, Romeo. Uh, Kilo Bravo 1, Bravo, Charlie, Romeo. Please copy 1, Bravo, Whiskey, India, QSL. I copied the one delta. What is your uh, section again? Come again. Connecticut. Connecticut. Over. Uh, Roger. One delta, Connecticut. Thanks a lot for the contact. Roger, Roger. Uh, thank you much. This is KB9 VBR QRZ. I heard a Mike Whiskey Charlie. K9 LGU, KB9 VBR. Hi, I'm ready for your KA1 RB. Roger that. Uh, please copy message number 602, routine. Roger, Michael. Thank you. We'll get that over to Patrick. Uh, KB9 VBR, K9 LGU. Thanks a lot for taking the message. Have a great day. KB9 VBR. <laughs> Wrapping up on field day this year has certainly been an interesting experience. Uh, the bands were crowded to say the least, especially on 20 and 40 meters. And then as you got down to the lower bands, uh, 40 and 80 meters this year, there was a lot of QSB or um, noise. Uh, I could hear static crashes. Um, for being out here in the middle of nowhere, the noise floor on 40 and 80 meters was a lot higher than I was expecting it to be. So um, I know it, it's um, 
south of us, you know, we had sunny skies all weekend. There was some rain and and, um, and thunder, and that could have contributed a little bit towards uh, that experience you know, in, the, in the lower Midwest. But, um, you know, for the most part, I had, you know, pretty decent luck on uh, 40 meters. 40 was really crowded. I could not really find an open space to call CQ at all. So on that band, I spent almost all of the entire time uh, hunting and pouncing. And uh, 20 meters was um, a little bit more open up. I was able to find a couple spots where I was able to call CQ a bit until things uh, kind of crowded up around me and I had to move on. Um, but um, what was surprising was that um, 10 meters was open. I got a few con contacts in 10. And actually I did surprisingly well on 15 meters with the off-center fed dipole antenna. A little bit better than I was expecting to. Um, like I you know, when I checked the antenna, it was about four to one untuned. So the tuner was able to tune it up uh, no problem. And, uh, but on 15 meters, the noise floor was really quiet. And I was able to, I was making you know, lots of contacts into, um, South, uh, North Texas, um, Oklahoma, uh, Colorado on, uh, on, on 15 meters. So it played really well into the um, southern southwestern uh, United States. I'd, I'd say probably uh, looking at all of the contacts I made, and I made about um, 78 phone contacts and five digital contacts. Uh, digital did not work out too well. It was, um, we're having, I was having good luck with it yesterday, this morning, my um, signal link. The interface just just decided to crap out on me, and I wasn't going to spend time trying to diagnose it. Uh, but um, I had um, really good coverage into the eastern and northeastern U.S. I had no problems working stations to the east of me. Uh, to the south of me was pretty good. Nothing to the west. I'll flash a map of where all my uh, QSIS came from, so you can kind of see how everything everything played out. But. Uh, uh, not too many contacts on the Wolf River coil. I spent most of the time on the wire antenna. The vertical wasn't working as well as the wire, so I kind of, uh, this weekend, so I kind of stayed on the wire antenna, uh, which was, um, which pre performed really quite well. I was, you know, was if, if I was able to work a station, I was able to work them pretty much loud and clear, other than, other than all the other QRM that was, that was causing the interference. So, um, it was a it was a good weekend. Had a great time. You know, not as many contacts as I was expecting to make, but um, still, you know, it was a it was a great experience. Uh, the batteries held out uh, very well. I was that 50 amp hour battery. I was able to catch enough sunlight on Saturday that um, by late afternoon it was still fully charged and it just ran for the rest of the. Um, rest of the event I was able to run barefoot 100 watts the entire time I didn't deplete my battery at all uh, so and my computer ran fine I had an I had a, a backup battery and a power inverter for that so I was able to keep that charged up too um, so didn't run out of power at all um, it was a good it was a good weekend so that's kind of my recap of Field Day 2020. Uh, great to hear all those 1D stations in there. And I know that that was the majority of the contacts I made. So with that, uh, for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpole-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So if you like this video, as always, you can give me that big thumbs up. Uh, check out some of the recommended videos alongside here, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe is your, your way to be notified when a future video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day, and 73.